Hey everyone, Mike Adams with Big Mike's Magic. And in this video, we're going to be, uh, really, uh, we're gonna be cracking open some packs here. Um, we got uh, the new release, uh, we got the new set that just came out, the uh, Theros Beyond Death set. And um, you know, we ordered the uh, 50 pack bundle, so we're gonna crack that open. And as we go through them, uh, we're gonna take a look at these cards. I haven't um, done a lot of pre-research on you know any spoilers or anything like that. I mean, I've seen some, you know, but I wanna really just kind of examine these cards to kind of go through them and discuss, you know, as we kind of go through which types of decks, you know, that we're seeing in the current metagame, you know, that we've seen up until obviously uh, today uh, with the release of the new set. Uh, but which of these cards might fit into some of the decks that have been winning and doing very well and then as well you know what type of decks might be able to make a comeback as we move towards the next mythic qualifier next month you know are there going to be a couple of you know just like a few months ago all of a sudden we're seeing this cat in the oven you know that was like the new thing and uh, all this food and so you know what's gonna be the next mechanic that you know kind of dominates the metagame you know moving into the next mythic qualifier next month so i'm excited to see what we've got Okay, let's get magic fired up here, and I'm uh, definitely excited. You know, um, you know, our our uh, last and you know, we qualified for the last mythic event, and it didn't quite go our way. And so, you know, I wanted to get the jump on it uh, when I originally started playing this. The goal. Uh, was to play this and not invest any actual money if I didn't need to. You know, obviously we can, uh, but uh, I didn't want to. You know, I wanted to see, you know, what kind of decks I could put together and build just based on kind of grinding it out. And uh, what I ended up getting uh, on, over the past um, the past set was I ended up getting like the Mastery Pass and whatnot so you can get some extra, you know, uh, gems and get some extra gold and get some extra packs, you know, and rares and things like that, which is actually very, very, very helpful. Um, you know, when you're looking to construct some of those tier one decks, guess what? You know, most of the time those are pretty rare or even mythic rare dependent. Uh, so a lot of times, you know, if you want to be able to have a full play set of something, either A, you got to get really, really, really lucky uh, with your packs, uh, or B, you're going to have to uh, load on, you know, 10, 20 bucks, um, you know, get the master pass 20 bucks. Um, you know, in order to be able to get more packs, so that way you can get your hands on more rares, more wild cards, you know, things like that. Okay, so we are now logged in, and let's take a look at what we see here that's different. Um, they loaded me up with a couple of challenges right away, so we got opportunities to get gold right off the bat here, which is really, really cool. They've reset this, obviously, so we'll look to, um, you know, get our mastery pass here, so that way we can get, you know, that way we can get all these extra rewards, you know, along the way here. Okay, and we'll, we'll save that for another video. Uh, let's see what's different in the store. They got a little um, notification orb there. So let's see what's new here. Okay, and obviously we got our mastery pass. And so again, that, you know, I considered getting the two bundles, right? Like they had two bundles that they were trying to push, you know, for a hundred bucks, you get both these bundles. And for me guys, you know, I, I try to play this competitively. You know, what I'm trying to do is build decks that are going to go far. You know, I want to get into the next Mythic Qualifier and I want to finish in the top 16. So that's what it's all about for me. You know, sure, you know, there's, uh, you know, the extra bells and whistles, the card sleeves, you know, and stuff like that, but that's not overly important to me. So I figured what I would do is I would just buy the packs and then from there, get my mastery pass. So again, I can focus on just getting more packs, getting more rares, so I can build out the competitive decks, okay? But it looks like the Mastery Pass is now available. And as you can see, 3,400 gems, 20 bucks. So, you know, we'll get that handled um, soon. And we'll get that taken care of. But let's do right away what we came here to do. And we are going to jump right into the packs. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and crack open these packs. Obviously, there's the option there to open 10 at a time. I'm not sure if we're ready for that. Because, again, I want to look at some of these cards. Um... Let's see here. Rise to glory. Okay, choose one or both. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Return or um, or both. Uh, return target or a card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's pretty cool. Okay, got the bronze sword here. Equip creature plus two plus zero. Enchant creature. Okay, so we got commons, commons, commons. You know, I think what I want to do is just focus on talking about the uncommons and the rares here. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. Let's crack it up. What's our rare? Ooh, we got a saga. So the Akron War. Gain control of target creature. 
for as long as this remains on the battlefield, okay? Um, second one, until your next turn, creatures your opponents control attack each combat if able, so force the attack. Three, each tapped creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. So interesting. So grab one of their creatures, okay, and then next round make all of their creatures attack. And then next round, each tap creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. So that's interesting. We'll see how that um, can play out. Uh, this one actually is pretty dang cool. You know, looking at this, you know, return target creature card from your graveyard. I really like this one. I'm thinking about uh, some of my, uh, you know, my Esper, my Doom Control uh, type decks, um, where this could be actually uh, pretty valuable, a pretty interesting card to use. So, okay, let's go to the next one. Let's go. Okay, and again, what we're going to focus on here is the uncommons. So Hydra's Growth, Enchant Creature. Okay, when this enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on Enchanted Creature at the beginning of your upkeep. Double the number of plus one, plus one counters on Enchanted Creature. That's big time. Okay, so every round, that's just going to make your creature bigger and bigger and bigger. That's really cool. Inevitable End, Enchant Creature. Enchanted creature has at the at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice a creature. That's actually really sweet. It'd be a couple of interesting ways to play this one. And let's see what our rare is. Ooh, Eidolon of Obstruction. Okay, so first strike loyalty abilities of planeswalkers your opponents control cost one more to activate. Okay, so that's a good way to get people to burn down their planeswalkers a little bit quicker. So, okay, very cool, okay, and I notice obviously it's got a little first above uh, each of these because it's my first in the playset of, of that particular card. Okay, let's go. Okay, what do we got for our uncommons here? We got Anax, Hardened in the Forge, okay? His power is equal to your devotion to red. And devotion, each uh, red mana symbol in the mana cost of permanence you control counts towards your devotion. So, okay, so let's say you got this creature in play, and that's the only creature you have in play, it's the only permanent you have in play, you would have two red devotion based on his mana cost here. But again, if you have more red permanents out, your devotion to red goes up. Okay, so its power is equal to the devotion to red, so that's really cool. So he's gonna start out as a two, three minimum, um, if you got some other red stuff out there, it'll be even bigger. So that's that's cool. Okay, whenever Annex or another non-token creature dies that you control, create a 1-1 one, one red creature token with this creature can't block. If, this, if the creature had four, power 4 or greater, create two of these tokens instead. Okay, so if this is a little bit bigger, okay, and then whenever this or another creature dies that's bigger than a power 4, you actually get two of these tokens. Okay, that's cool. Feel the Ruin. Okay, so colorless mana, sacrifice it, destroy target non-basic land and opponent controls. Each player searches their library for a basic land card, puts it onto the battlefield. Okay, so you can destroy one of their dual lands, okay, or special lands, and then both get to go ahead and get a basic land. Okay, let's see our rare, and we will take that. You know, rare wild cards are perfect because we can figure out what we need and then get exactly what we want. So let's go. And I think what we'll do is maybe we'll get through this first 10 and then I'll crack 10. Okay, otherwise, you know, I don't want this video to get way too long here. Okay, so let's check out these uncommons. We've got the Meyer Triton. Death Touch, 2-1 two, for 2. When it enters the battlefield, put the top two cards of your library into the graveyard, but you also gain two life. That's pretty cool. Okay, so you take two off the top of your own deck. Which is, which is, you know, a thing. Again, if you got ways to reanimate, that, that could, maybe that's not even an issue. Uh, could be a positive. Uh, but as well, you get two life. And it's a zombie merfolk. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. We got the Triumph of the Annex. We got another saga here. Till the end of turn, target creature gains trample and gets plus X plus zero, where X is equal, where X is the number of lore counters on Triumph of an X. And it looks like it does that for the first three rounds that it's in place. So target creature gets trample and plus X plus zero, depending on how many lore counters are on this saga. And then when it gets to that fourth saga, target creature you control fights up to one target creature you don't control. Okay, interesting. All right, let's take a look at the rare. 
and another saga here, and I like this art. Very cool, very interesting. Okay, the first, is that Irones? Irone Games, okay. So one, create a one one white human soldier creature token. Next round, put three plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. Third one, if you control a creature with power four or greater, okay, draw two cards. And then number four is create a gold token. Okay, gold token, which means you can literally sacrifice, it looks like you can sacrifice it for mana. Okay, sacrifice this token, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go. Interesting stuff here so far. Bringing back the sagas. Okay, I remember seeing the sagas when I first started playing. Okay, when I first, uh, and I've only been playing now for a few months. So it, must, it was right before uh, Thrones of Eldraine you know, came out uh, that uh, I started playing. And so I remember seeing the sagas and all of a sudden they were gone. Right, so uh, interesting to see those back. I'll have to get up to speed on that mechanic, okay, and learn how to use those in my decks. So, Revelant Hoplite, okay, so this is um, you know, four plus one. So, whenever it enters the battlefield, create a number of plus one pl or number of one one white human soldier creature tokens equal to your devotion to white. Okay, so depending on your devotion to white, you're gonna pump out a, a bunch of tokens. Okay, so if you got a bunch of uh, white devotion out there, you can drop this out and get a ton of tokens. Okay, we got a colorless here. Soul Guide Lantern. When it comes into play, exile target card from a graveyard. I like that. Okay, uh, sacrifice it. Exile each opponent's graveyard. I love that. Okay. Um, or pay one and sacrifice it to draw a card. I really like that. You know, that, um, you know, again, when you're thinking about some of these cat oven decks, you know, where they are reanimating and bringing things back and forth, it's like, if you can catch them, you know, they got that oven tapped and you can catch them, you know, uh, this would be a way to get that thing out of the game. You know, gutter bones, get that thing out of the game, right? Cool. Very, very cool. I like that. Let's see if we can get a play set of those. Uh, Phoenix of Ash. Okay. Two red, one colorless. Flying in haste. Pay two colorless and one red. It gets plus two plus zero to the end of the turn. And we got a new mechanic here, escape. Okay, two colorless and two red. Exile three other cards from your graveyard. Phoenix of, of Ash escapes with a plus one plus one counter on it. So what the escape mechanic is, is you may cast this card from your graveyard for its escape cost. So, okay, I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of that and that's maybe why we're seeing some stuff that's removing graveyards from the game is because this is something that you could again, just keep bouncing back, you know, it dies, gets killed. Well, it's gonna go into your graveyard and then, you know, hey, you know, and this one actually has haste, flying in haste. So it's like, okay, bring it back. And now it gets a plus one, plus one counter. It comes back as a three, three. So, okay, very cool. All right, so we got a wild card here. What do we got for big blue? Threnody Singer, we got a Siren. One colorless, one blue, flying and flash. When this enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent control gets a minus X, minus zero, okay? And that's pretty sweet, because this has flash, okay? Until the end of turn where X is your devotion to blue. So if you got plenty of blue out there, okay, and your permanents, you can drop this out. Someone wants to attack you with something big, they think they're gonna you know, get a crack on you, okay? Uh, you can go ahead and drop this out and uh, reduce that power. So that's interesting. And we got our first mythic rare, Perforous Bronze Blooded. Okay, for colorless one red. And it's a legendary enchantment creature, okay? So indestructible, as long as your devotion to red is less than five, this is not a creature. So if your devotion to red is less than five, this isn't a, a creature, okay? Other creatures you control have haste. Sweet. Pay two and two colorless and one red. You may put a red creature card or artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. That's pretty cool. So you could have some big time red, you know, creatures in your hand, okay, or, or artifact creatures in your hand, or artifact cards, artifact creature cards in your hand. And you could, for th basically three mana, 
bring them out. Yes, they're going to die, but if they have haste, right? Or again, this is going to give all other creatures you control haste. Wow, that's actually pretty sick. <laughs> you know, um, I'm thinking about the um, the seven seven. Uh, forget the name off the top of my head maybe I'll put a picture of it in the video here but the red dragon that comes in and whenever it attacks it gets to deal damage and, and do a couple of different things um, being able to bring it into the battlefield with something like this allows you to take that swing because a lot of times whenever that hit the battlefield people are gonna get rid of it immediately because it's such a big threat this is a way to get it into there get it into the battlefield it gains haste because of this card and uh, wow this is actually pretty cool I have a feeling we will see this one a lot and it's a 7-6 for 5. So, you know, that in and of itself, uh, that's a big time card. Okay, we like that one. I think we'll be seeing plenty of that. Okay, uh, we've seen this, Inevitable End. So this will be our second one here. Okay, let's look over here. Nessian Wanderer. Okay, we got another ability here. Okay, so we got a 1-3 for 2. One colorless, one green. Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them and put that card into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. So this ability triggers when an enchantment enters the battlefield. So that's really cool. So this could be sitting out there, you put out an enchantment, well, you get to look at your top three, and if there's any land there, you get to put it, looks like, right into your hand. Okay, so it goes right into your hand, the rest go on the bottom. So that's pretty cool. Let's see our rare. Shatter the sky. Two white, two colorless. Sorcery. Each player who controls a creature with power four or greater draws a card. Then destroy all creatures. I like that. Okay. And looking at this casting cost too, it's uh, kind of reminding me of one of my old school favorite spells, Wrath of God. Okay. Uh, back when I was playing, uh, last time I was competitively, it was, it was that time spiral block. And I was actually running, uh, gosh, uh, the, the card Smallpox. Um, that was my favorite card. Um, I, I really enjoyed running that card. And I basically ran a, you know, just wipe the board, keep it clean, and that would reanimate uh, a Chroma, um, Angel of Death, Angel of Death, Angel of Wrath. Right? Gosh, old school, many years ago. Uh, but the, the goal was to keep everything clear, wipe that out, and I would bring back the Acroma, I would bring back Angel of Despair, so it would come into play and destroy target permanent. So I ran four Wrath of Gods in that deck. So looking at this casting cost here, I mean, this is actually really, really cool. Okay, um, I like this. Uh, Fires of Invention, I like this already. Um, a lot of different ways you could use this. Okay, so you get to draw a card, Creature Four Grinner. Then destroy all creatures. Gosh, I mean, that could even replace Kaya's Wrath. You know, um, very, very interesting card. Shatter the Sky. Okay. Let's go. This is juicy. What are juicy cards? Okay, we got another one of these, Rise of Glory. We'll take that because I like that. Uh, let's see here. Eli Rios Enraptured. Okay. Legendary Creature Human. When it enters the battlefield, tapped. Okay, so this is a two colorless and one blue. It doesn't untap during your untap step if you control a reflection. Okay, so when this enters the battlefield, create a 3-2 reflection creature token. Okay. Okay, so I get it now. At first I was like, well, what's reflection? So when this comes into play, it's going to create a reflection card. And notice the reflection is actually a 3-2 instead of a 2-3. So this is going to come into play tapped, and it's going to stay tapped as long as you control the reflection card. So goal is going to be to attack with this, attack with this, attack with this, and then if it dies, that's fine because then this one will untap during your next untap phase. So that's an interesting uh, mechanic there. Okay, we'll probably see plenty of that. Let's see our rare. The Lacos, Crafter of Wonders. Um, very cheap. So we got a blue, red, and a colorless, 2-4. Tap it to add two colorless. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate the abilities of artifacts. Equipped creatures you control have flying and haste. Okay. So I have to tap that for two to activate artifacts. And what do we got here? Is this a land? Unknown Shores, 
colorless. Pay one and tap it for man of any color. Okay, cool. That's interesting. Okay, sweet. All right, let's go. What do we got here? Hero of the Nikesborn. Okay. So when Hero comes, enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 human soldier creature token. Whenever you cast a spell that targets this, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero till the end of turn. Interesting. So if you got a bunch of buff type spells where you can boost this thing up, it's going to give all your creatures a boost to plus one, plus zero. We got here enchant creature for one, one, one for one with lifelink. You can pay one and sacrifice this. Target creature or enchantment you control gains protection from the color of your choice until the end of turn. Interesting. You know, it's a good way to keep your cards safe. Um, okay, you can put that out there as basically, gosh, I just remember old school circle of protection. You know, it's like a one-time use circle of protection on a creature or enchantment that you control. Okay, I like that. That could be used. What do we got here? Great Breaker Lamia. Four colorless, one black. Enchantment creature, so we're seeing that. Okay. Lifelink, 4-4. Four, four. When this enters the battlefield, search your library for a card and put it into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Spells you cast from your graveyard cost one less to cast. Very interesting. So, spells you cast. So I wonder if that's going to factor into the escape mechanic. You know, if you're paying that... My assumption is that that would be a spell. So if anything's got an escape mechanic, um, this will take away one uh, colorless and make it one uh, one less colorless to cast. Okay, that's uh, that's interesting. That'll be usable. What's this over here? Myers graphs. Target. Okay, enchanted creature gets minus three, minus three for two. That's pretty cool. Gosh, there was another card back in the day that was like that, but it was an instant. Was it Death's Grasp? What was that card? I used to use that one a lot as well, you know, and you'd just be able to minus three, minus three, and it was an instant. This is an enchantment, um, but still pretty powerful, okay? Kind of a nerf down version of that card. Okay, let's get into the 10th pack here, and then for the next volley, we'll, we'll open 10 at a time and kind of breeze through it. So what do we got? Whirlwind Denial. For each spell and ability your opponent controls, counter it. For each spell and ability your opponent control, your opponent's control, counter it unless they pay, is that a one? Four? Okay. Okay, we got an uncommon wild card here. Okay, just kind of peeking at some of these commons. And what's our rare go? Terranika, a Crowan veteran, two white, one colorless. Vigilance, 3-3. Three, three. So whenever this attacks, untap another target creature you control. Until the end of turn, that creature has a base power and toughness of 4-4 four, four and gains indestructible. That's pretty sweet. So you got your 1-1 one, one token out there, okay, um, that's just sitting there. Now it becomes a 4-4 four, four that's indestructible and can attack. That's cool. Okay. Okay. Starting to see some power, um, some power cards here. Oh, and I just opened one instead of ten. Okay, we'll do it on the next one here. Do we get another NX? Yeah. Okay, so we got our second copy of this one here. Okay, let's see what's new over here. Heliod's Punishment. So we got an enchantment, one colorless, one white. When it enters the battlefield with four task counters on it, enchanted creature can't attack or block, loses all abilities, and has tap it. Remove a task counter from Halad's Punishment. If then, if it has no task counters, destroy it. So this is a great way to nullify something or nullify a creature for four rounds. Interesting. So it stays on the battlefield. Okay. Um, okay, that'll be interesting. Okay, let's see what we got here. Treacherous Blessings. When this enters the battlefield, draw three cards like that. Whenever you cast a spell, you lose a life. Nyeh. Whenever this becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. That's all right. You know, um, if you had the way to target this with a spell or ability very easily, you're essentially paying three to draw three cards. Okay, you lose a life when you cast a spell, but again, if you have a way to sacrifice this or a way to just get it off the battlefield, 
uh, you're not going to be losing a ton of life. I mean, obviously, if it sits out there, you're casting spells, you're going to lose a life every round. But three cards for three? That's pretty sweet. Okay. All right. We're going to do a 10 piece on this one. Let's go 10. Open 10. All right. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. Eat to extinction. Exile the top target creature or planeswalker. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that into your graveyard. So that's cool. Exile, creature or planeswalker. Okay, Euro Titan of Nature's Wrath. One green, one blue, one colorless. Enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. Okay, so if you just hard cast it, you're going to have to sacrifice it right away. Um, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, you gain three life and draw a card. You, then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So you know what? I like that. You could pay the hard cast, put it out there, gain three, draw a card. This goes to the graveyard. And then from there, you can escape cast it as a 6-6. Six, six. Two green, two blue. Exile five other cards from your graveyard to do so. Mythic rare. Okay. We got the Helioid Sun Crowned, indestructible, 5-5 five, five for 3. That's a beast. As long as your Devotion to White is less than 5, it isn't a creature. Whenever you gain life, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target creature enchantment you control. Pay 1 colorless, 1 white. Another target creature gains a life link until the end of turn. Okay. That seems like a totally stacked card. Um, wow. You know, I, I, you, know you can... Uh, it's a great whenever you gain life put a plus one plus one on target creature you control it's like if you had a bunch of stuff out there and plenty of mana you can go ahead and give everybody life link and all of a sudden you're gaining all this life that is really really powerful okay we'll take this we got a, a mythic wild card here there we go a black red scry land temple of malice okay take that Ephemia the Cacophony. All right. So 2-1 uh, for 2, flying at the beginning of your next end step. You may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, pump out a 2-2 black zombie token. Okay, that's cool. You got a lot of um, enchantments in your deck. Remove from the game, you get a 2-2 token. Like that. Nyx Lotus. Enters the battlefield tapped. Choose a color. Add an amount of mana of that color equal to your devotion to that color. Ooh. Ooh. So if you got high devotion on white, blue, red, whatever it is, you, know, you choose that color, and you choose it after you tap. So you can change that every round. Oh, wow. So if you got five, six devotion to something, it's like, okay, I'll tap this for five mana. That's cool. Okay, we've seen this. This is our second copy of this one, second copy of this one. And what do we got here? Artist, Oracle of Half Truths. Okay, we got a black, blue, and two colorless. Menace, it's a 3 2. When this enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a pile face down, into a face down pile and a face up pile. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. So they're going to look at the top three, and they're going to make a face up and a face down pile. So you know, face up and face down. So it might be two here, probably two in the face down, one in the face up, right? It's probably how it'll be done. I, I don't know. You know, that'll be an interesting mechanic to have um, play out, but you get to choose, and the rest go to your graveyard. Nice. Okay. I'm going to go back to a single for a few. Here we're at. we got 29 packs left, so we're going to burn through this. Escape Velocity, one red, chant creature, plus one, plus zero in haste, and uh, you can pay one and one red, exile two other cards from your graveyard to bring this back into play. So if you need something to get haste, that's a great way to slap it on there for cheap. We've got an uncommon wild card here, four, 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 escapes with three. Okay, when you escape this, you have to pay five colorless and two green though. Come back as a 7-7. Seven, seven. Okay, what's our rare? Nightmare Shepherd. Okay, so it's flying, 4-4. Four, four. 
uh, two black, two colorless. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 1-1, one, one, and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. So whenever a non-creature control you control dies, you may exile it so you can choose. And then if you do, bring it back to play or create a copy of that creature, but it's a 1-1, one, one, okay? But it's going to maintain all of those its abilities. So if you got something that's got some abilities, uh, that okay, that's another card. So we'll be seeing that one. Okay. Next, Herald. Two colors, one green. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target enchanted creature or enchantment creature. Target enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control gets plus one and gains trample until the other end of turn. So every combat you get to buff something there. Okay, we got the birth of Miletus. Okay, so one white, one color. Search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, put it into your hand, shuffle your library. Number two, create a zero four colorless wall. Number three, you gain two life. Pretty simple saga there. Okay, and what's our rare here? Okay, and that's our second one of those. Kind of get folks to burn down their planeswalkers a little bit faster. Then I have divine counter target creature or enchantment spell. If spells counter this way, exile it. Okay. Because we're starting to see that exile from the graveyard is going to be very, very important with this set of cards. Um, which is great because it kind of counters uh, some of the um, the uh, current metagame uh, that we're seeing on the um, on the ranked games. Okay, we got the Chain Wave Arachner. So we got a 1 for a 1-2 with Reach. Okay, so when it enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to target a creature with flying and opponent control. So if they got a little 1-1 one, one creature out there, you can wipe it out. Exile um, Escape, so you can pay 3 and 2 colors. Exile 4 of the cards from your graveyard. And then it comes back with, okay, 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So when it comes back as a four or five, now you're able to wipe out a, any flying creature that your opponent has that's a, has, has four toughness. That's pretty cool. So we've got the Stringling Lionfish, one, uh, two, one, four, two. Whenever you cast your first spell during your each opponent's turn, you may tap or untap target non-land permanent. Cool. Okay. And what do we got here? That's cool art. Timeric Calls of the Dead. Step one, put the top three cards of your library to your graveyard. Then you may exile a creature or enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create a 2-2 zombie black token. Okay, so you get that for two rounds. And then number three, you gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. Okay, so we got some zombies going on. You brought some zombies back. You get to do some scrying. Okay, all right. Let's go. Okay, we'll do this one, then we'll do another 10 piece after this. Okay, we got Heroes of the Winds. Okay, three colors, one white flying. Whenever you cast a spell that targets this, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero till the end of turn. That's cool. Careless Celebrant, um, one, a two, one for two. One red, one colorless. When it dies, it deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. That's cool. Omen of the Dead, one, and this one's got Flash, okay? So when this enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, okay? Um, pay two colors, one black, sacrifice this to scry two. That's a pretty cool enchantment, okay? And the fact that it's got Flash, it's the battlefield. So at the end of your turn, right, at the end of your turn, let me go ahead and return this from the graveyard to my hand. I like that a lot. Okay, and what's our rare? So Thassa's Oracle, when this enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library where X is your devotion to blue. Okay, so it'll be at least two if this is your only permanent out there. Put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. So that's interesting. You know, if you have a way to get your decks super low and you got plenty of blue devotion out there, 
that's interesting. That's a, a pretty slick way to win the game. Wow. So let's say, you know, you got five cards in your deck, but your devotion to blue is six. You're able to go ahead and look at those six. And since that's greater than the number of cards you have in your library, you would automatically win. Interesting card. Okay. All right. We're going to do a second round of 10 here. We've got 25 more packs to go. Let's crack open 10 of them. And what do we got? Okay. First and foremost, we got Storm's Wrath. So this deals four damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Wow, I like that. That's actually slick, okay? Um, we've been seeing a lot of planeswalker decks out there where there's just so many planeswalkers, it's hard to deal with all of them unless you're running the old Elder spell. And uh, that doesn't always fit. You know, this is something where it deals damage to the creatures plus the planeswalkers. So I'm thinking about the Fires of Invention decks. This might be something that you see. Storm Herald. 3-2 three, for 3, 2 colors, 1 red. It has haste. When it enters the battlefield, return any number of aura cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures you control. Exile those auras at the beginning of your next end step. If those auras will leave the battlefield, exile them instead of putting them anywhere else. Okay, so if you got a bunch of auras that you uh, had on creatures, okay, you can bring them all back, attach to creatures for a, basically a one-time uh, use. Um, then they're going to be removed from the game, okay? Nylea Kenide, Mythic Rare, Indestructible. We've got a 5-6 for 4 mana, so 3 colors, 1 green. As long as your devotion to green is less than 5, it isn't a creature. Creatures you control, that you cast, cost, what does that say, 2 less to cast? Okay? And then 2 and a green, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into the graveyard. Not bad at all. We'll be seeing him for sure. We've got the Woe Strider. Okay, two colorless, one black. When it enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 white goat token. Sacrifice another creature to scry one. Okay, um, escape for two black and three. Exile four of the cards from your graveyard. Woe escapes with two counters on it. So when you escape, it'll come back as a 5-4, okay? Got, again, we've got some new Scrylands here, so these are pretty sweet. Uh, White-blue Scryland. we got white-green Scryland, okay? We've got the Dream Trawler, two blue, two white, two colorless, flying with lifelink. Whenever you draw a card, it gets plus one, plus zero to the end of turn. Whenever it attacks, draw a card. Discard a card, and this thing gains hexproof until the end of turn. Three, five, flying. That's that's pretty powerful. Okay. Dalakos, Crafter of Wonders, and we have seen this one. Okay, so you can tap it for two colorless. Okay, we've seen this one. Archon of Sun's Grace, two white and two colorless. Flying life link. Pegasus creatures you control have life link. Okay. Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 white Pegasus creature token with flying. Okay, and so this gives them all lifelink as well. Cool. Okay, let's, well, um, okay, we're going to go single here. Okay, what's new, what's new, what's new? Exile, target artifact or enchantment for two, pretty cool sorcery. Okay, we got that, got that. Let's see what our rare is. Phoenix of the Ash. Okay, so we've seen this one before, but a pretty powerful card. Um, we're going to go ahead and open 10 here, and that'll give us four left after that. This, this is pretty cool. Kind of reminds me of back in the day when I used to play uh, tabletop. You know, it's like when we, uh, me and my friends, we like go in on a box, right? And everybody would we'd split a box and we'd crack open all the packs. It was a lot of fun. Okay, so we got another one of these black red scrylands. Cool. Perfect. We got a third one of these. So that's a cool, that's cool. Wool Strider again. Okay. Got that one already. What's well, new? Perforus's invention. One red and X. Choose one. Create an X slash one red elementary creature token with trample and haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. Okay. Make yourself a little ball lightning. Okay, if you had six uh, as your X, um, deals 
twice X damage to target creature or planeswalker. That's pretty slick. So if you had, you know, one red and three for your colorless, you could deal six damage to a creature or a planeswalker. That's pretty powerful. Okay, Heloid, Helioid's Intervention, two white and X. Destroy X target artifacts or enchantments. Target player gains twice X life. Wow. You know, like I just see this deck literally uh, causing big problems like my um, Dance of the Mance uh, deck where I'm trying to get all these all this fodder out there to sacrifice a Doom Foretold. It's like, okay, we're just going to go ahead and wipe all those out. Ugh. Brutal. That's that, that could be a big card. Dryad of Ilsean Grove. Two colorless, one green. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. It's big. Lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. Wow. So that, um, that's a great way for your multicolored decks right there. Um, you know, I'm, I assume that, you know, if it's every other land type, then it's gonna be able to produce that kind of mana as well. So wow, okay. Underworld Breach, Enchantment, one red, one colorless. Each non-land card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to that card's mana cost plus exile three ca other cards from your graveyard. At the beginning of each end step, sacrifice Underworld Breach. So if you're wanting to get some stuff out of your graveyard, okay, stick this out there, okay, and then you pay that card's casting cost plus exile three other cards uh, from your graveyard, you can bring back whatever you want. That's cool. Tectonic Giant. Two red, two colorless. Whenever this attacks or becomes a target of a spell an opponent controls, choose one. Either it deals three damage to each opponent. So you want to target this. Okay, if someone else targets this, you can hit everyone for three. Or exile the top two cards of your library. Choose one of them until the end of turn you may play that card. So depending on where you're at, that's that's interesting. And we got Hactos the Unscarred. Two red, two white okay it attacks each turn if able this is a six one okay as it enters the battlefield choose two three or four at random it has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number let's read that again as hactos enters the battlefield choose two three or four at random Hectos has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. Wow. So it has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. So let's say it's two. Everything other than two, it has protection from. That is a pretty tough card right there. Interesting. All right, six one. Okay, four more packs, guys. All right, let's run through these. Okay, we got Furious Rise, two colorless, one red. At the beginning of your next end step, if you control a creature of power four or greater, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card until you exile another card with Furious Rise. Okay, at the beginning of your next of your end step, if you have a creature bigger than four. Flip over the top card of your library, exile it, and you may play it until the next round when you exile the next card. That's cool. Let's see our rare. Erebos Intervention. One black and X. Choose one. Target creature gets minus X, minus X till the end of turn. You gain X life. That's cool. Okay. Um, great way to eliminate something big off the battlefield and then gain that life. And then, or um, exile up to twice X target cards from graveyards so you can get rid of a lot of cards with this okay you got three and then one black it's like okay I'm gonna get rid of six cards from graveyards my choice okay wow okay a couple more packs to go let's see sweet oblivion one blue one colorless target player puts the top four cards of their library into the graveyard Escape for four mana, and then also exile four other cards from your graveyard. Okay. 
All right, we've seen commanding presence already. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has first strike, and whatever this creature deals combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier token. Okay, let's see our rare. Bronze Hide Lion, one green, one white. Okay, you can pay that same, it's a 3-3. Three, three. You can pay the one green, one white. It gains indestructible till the end of turn. So when this dies, return it to the battlefield. It's an aura enchantment with enchant creature you control and green, pay green white. Enchanted creature gains indestructible until the end of turn. It loses all other abilities. Wow. Okay, so when this dies, it comes back. Okay, return it to the battlefield as an aura enchantment. And you put it on a creature that you control. So you got to have something in play. But then you can pay green and white. And that creature is now able to gain indestructible. Okay, but it loses all other abilities. Okay. That's interesting. Okay, what's new here? We got Terramint Chosen from Death. Two black, straight up. Its toughness is equal to your devotion to black, so it'll start off as at least a 2-2. Two, two. Pay one colorless, one black. Exile up to two target cards from graveyards. You gain one life for each creature card exiled in this way. Um, that's pretty cool. It's like, like almost like a little mini Kaya right there. Um, all right. Okay, what's our rare? Terranika, a Crowan veteran. And wait, we've seen this one. In case we don't need to discuss it again. Counterspell. Okay, just look, taking a quick peek at the commons. And let's crack open our last pack of 50. Okay, let's see what we get in here. And we've got another one of these. Perfect. Other creatures go up trample. That's cool. That's cool. It's our rare. And a red green scryland. That's actually really powerful. You know, red and green, um, just being able to kind of move the deck. That's pretty cool. So, all right. So that's an interesting uh, set of cards that we got there. I'm, I'll definitely be excited to uh, see. And it looks like kind of just, you know, going through that, it looks like what we're seeing is a lot of things that affect the graveyard, you know, um, and this new ability to escape the graveyard. Um, it's really going to make it more important than ever to eliminate people's graveyards from the game. And so I'm already starting to see um, how important that's going to be uh, to deal with, with these cards. It's like, you know, you get something killed out the battlefield. It's like, well, you know, if it's got to escape, it's like, well, you got to deal with it again, um, potentially uh, multiple times, unless you can eliminate the dang thing from the game. And if it's something that has haste, that can be a really big problem. Now, uh, and this is just something for those that you know stayed on till the end of this video. I'll even put the link. Um, I'll put this in the description below as well. But I saw that they are actually giving away a code um, for a couple of free packs. So even though we, we just ra uh, just opened 50, it's like, can we get our hands on a couple of more? So uh, all you got to do to get, uh, and what they're doing is they're giving away three packs for free. And this is for everybody. So even if you didn't um, buy the buy or pay the 50 bucks or buy cards, um, you can get these three for free. Just come over here, go to store, go to redeem code, and then it's play Theros. P-L-A-Y-T-H-E-R-O-S. Enter. Redeem code success, and we get three packs. Okay? So again, all you gotta do is come over here, play Theros, and you can get yourself three free packs. So don't forget to get those, okay? And while we're in the pack opening mood, let's go ahead and crack these bad boys open. Let's go. Let's see if we get anything else new here. Okay, so okay. Calafi beloved of the sea, two blue, one white, or one colorless. Power and toughness equal to, or power equal to the devotion to blue. Creatures and enchantments you control have spells your opponents cast that target this permanent, cost one more to cast. Okay, so if they want to try to target this, I got to pay more. Banishing light, two white, or I'm sorry, two colorless, one white. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the game. Cool. Okay, what was this? Sleep from the Dead. Tap target creature, doesn't untap. Okay, what's our rare? Okay, we've seen this. 
Okay, again, making people pay a little bit more to use their planeswalkers. That's cool. So planeswalkers are taking a hit. Um, I'm trying to think if we've even seen a planeswalker. I don't, I don't think we've even seen a new one. So this is really, um, I don't want to say nerfing planeswalkers a little bit. Towering Wave Mystic, whenever it deals damage, target player puts that many cards from the top of their library into their graveyard. That's a beast. That's a common. So whenever this thing deals damage, target player puts that many cards. So if you boosted this thing up, right, and then cracked them for 8, 9, 10, it's like, okay, there's take your 8 damage and also give me 8 off the top. Okay? Wow. So Grey Merchant of Asphodel, 3 colorless, 2 black. So whenever uh, this enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black. You gain life equal to the life lost in this way. Wow. So if you got big devotion to black, you put this out, they're going to lose that life, which could win you the game. And then um, B, you're going to gain that life. So I can keep you in the game. All right, what's our rare? Sweet. So we get a little mythic uh, wild card here. So we picked up a bunch of these. And then look at this. This one extra pack will give us one more rare wild card. Let's crack that bad boy open. And this will be our last pack for the video. Glimpse of Freedom. Pay two. So one colorless, one blue. Draw a card. And if you needed to, okay, you can cast it again for two colorless, one blue. Exile five cards from your graveyard. So if you need that extra card, you could do it. And so we got all this other stuff. Indomitable Will. Okay. What is our rare? And we've seen this. Thassa's Intervention. Right, we've seen this one. No, or don't. I've, I've seen Thoughts of something different. Okay, so this one is two blue and X. Choose one. Look at the top X cards of your library. Put up to two of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom in any random order. Or counter target spell unless its controller pays twice X. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so even if you just had the two and your X was zero, it's almost like a quench. You're going to pay twice. Well, no, I suppose that'd be twice. You'd have to have at least one, right? Because if X was zero, twice, two times zero is zero. Okay, so not like a quench. But if you had two blue and then one colorless, that makes them, then it's like a quench. Okay, so that's a kind of, that's a nice dual use card right there. Okay, so pretty interesting cards. Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of different ways that we're going to be able to use some of these cards. And again, just, you know, based on, you know, going through this and kind of looking at the different cards that, that we got. Um, again, looks like there's going to be a lot of graveyard play here. And it looks like with this new escape mechanic, um, there's going to be a lot of things trying to come back and trying to come back and trying to come back. And they also added a bunch of cards that eliminate cards that, um, you know, from the gra graveyard. Uh, eliminate them from the game, you know, for that purpose. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot of that. And now I'm kind of starting to see it, why, you know, Mill um, might become a little bit more relevant again. Because, sure, you can dump stuff into the graveyard, okay, but if you have a way to eliminate graveyards from the game, and that's where you see, like, Ashiok, um, where, you know, top, and with that card, you know, you take the top four off someone's library and then eliminate their library from the game, or I'm sorry, their graveyard from the game. You know, I always loved that card. I thought it was always just such a dirty, dirty card to use on somebody, especially if they had the ability to bring back stuff back from their graveyard. And I think that card is probably going to get quite a bit more play um, over the next, in this, you know, over the next uh, couple weeks and potentially uh, into next month as we roll into the next Mythic Qualifier. So, all right, so I'm excited to implement some of these cards into some of the decks, and we'll be creating some uh, videos soon uh, where we're talking about some of the new decks we've been able to construct using some of these new cards. So hopefully you guys got value uh, in this uh, walkthrough. Again, we just busted open some packs, we walked through some of the cards, and walked through some of the mechanics of these cards. And so hopefully um, this, this helped you and gave you some insight as to how some of these cards might be used in some of the more popular decks that have been running and winning uh, up until this point. Again, guys, if you got value, make sure to give this video a like, give it a comment below, and I will see you in the next video.